In this video, we're going to give you all the important news, the latest developments, and the breaking news about the deadliest and worst mass shooting event in U.S. history. Everyone is mourning after Omar Martin, 30-year-old American citizen with Afghan descent, here pictured wearing NYPD t-shirts while he was taking a selfie, decided to enter a gay club in Orlando, where he automatically was engaged with a gun battle with police officers. The police officers then, after Martin went to the club, after the gun battle, waited three hours, three hours, while people trapped inside the club desperately called and messaged friends and relatives. Eventually, after those three hours, police crashed into the building with an armored vehicle and stun grenades and killed Martin. Martin had three hours to kill 50 people, to injure 53 other individuals. There's actual video of an eyewitness on the local news in Orlando saying that he believes Martin had assistance and help from the inside. This eyewitness was cut off, but you could watch this ABC video in the description below and fact check and source everything we are saying. Now, who was Martin? He actually worked for the world's largest security company. He worked for a company that was transporting illegal immigrants inside of the United States. The company, G4S, which Vanity Fair did a feature piece on, called the Chaos Company. Whenever governments can't or won't maintain order from oil fields in Africa to airports in Britain and nuclear facilities in America, the London-based global security, G4S, has been filling the void. This is the company that granted him a job and a security license. His wife, says that Martin was on steroids and that he was mentally ill. She also talks about how he physically abused her for not doing chores around the house. He was also a registered Democrat. And in 2013, Martin was actually interviewed twice by federal agents after co-workers reported that he made inflammatory comments to them about radical Islamic propaganda. The following year, 2014, the FBI looked at him again because of ties with an American who traveled to the Middle East to become a suicide bomber. He was then placed on the terrorist watch list, which was maintained by the FBI. He pledged allegiance to ISIS, and ISIS actually announced three days before the Orlando massacre that there would be an attack inside of Florida. Now during this time when we are still finding out all the facts of everything that has happened, you would expect, especially when the news just broke for the mainstream media, to at least have their thoughts with the victims, to at least not jump to conclusions, to at least not point blame and fingers based off their own political agenda. But of course, they did not and they automatically started calling the shooter a white Christian. Now, that information, of course, is incorrect. There are other people using this, this extremely tragic event to push their political agenda and blame right-wing Christian conservatives. Our government right now is calling for a ban on weapons and guns. Bernie Sanders just bluntly calls for a ban on all automatic weapons within the United States, even though where the shooting take, took place, it was a gun-free zone. A previous attempted terrorist attack inside of Texas was prevented because people were armed and were able to defend themselves against radical Islamic terrorists. As we're speaking, Facebook is actually deleting the Stop Islamization of America page after the Orlando attacks. Reddit is banning users, deleting their accounts after they mention anything about Muslims. And here we see a clear Reddit post after the Charleston shooter calling him a white supremacist, being pushed forward, being upvoted, being on the main page. Meanwhile, when it came out that the news that this guy was a radical Islamic terrorist, this was off topic and censored and banned. 
And as we are speaking, there's more news developing with a man who was just apprehended by law enforcement who was headed to LA for a pride event. As everything is still developing, as everything is still breaking, it is still extremely complex to make a definitive decision on what exactly happened here. We are still finding out the facts, but one question that you and all of America should have is where, where was our government? Where was the NSA during San Bernardino, during Chattanooga, and now after Orlando? Where was the FBI that investigated this guy three times when he was already on a terror watch list and still able to buy guns, still able to get a security license, still able to work for the world's largest security company in the world, and at the same time was given three hours by responding police units, three hours to commit this horrible, horrendous crime. Ask questions, demand answers. We're going to have more important developments on this event because it will have huge political repercussions in this country. So stay tuned. Subscribe to youtube.com forward slash we are change.